while I got you here, do you have any classified information you want to share with our viewers in regards to UFOs right here on Third Phase of Moon? If, if I had classified information at this late date, I certainly had plenty of it when I worked in industry. I wouldn't have shared it then, and if I had it now, I wouldn't share it either. But, and I think that's why some people talk to me. They trust me enough. Uh, I had a guy call me and say, how come you're still alive? I said, what do you mean? Well, you're saying the government's lying and covering up? And I said, yes, but anybody who listens to me know that I don't want everything out out on the table and I may be doing exactly what they want, getting them ready, getting the public ready for when the big disclosure comes. But think about it. What happens when we admit that people have been abducted and the citizens say, can't you protect me? That's a sticky wicket when you get down to it, you know. <laughs> you know, Stanton, I have to ask, have you ever seen a UFO for yourself with your own eyes? No, I never have. I, uh, Kathleen and I were being interviewed <laughs> for television talking about the Hill case out in the middle of nowhere in New Hampshire at night, dark, and suddenly the cameraman of all people says, hey, what's that over your heads? What? And we, so we, you never have that happen to you. I've been interviewed a load of times, never have anybody, the cameraman, you know, interrupt the process. We looked up behind us, there were some points of light in the sky, one after the other, left to right. I don't know what the heck it was. We later figured they were filming this <laughs> with our backs, <laughs> the objects up there. We later found out other people at the place where we were staying had uh, also seen UFOs that day. We think, think, not sure, uh, that it was a uh, National Guard group dropping battlefield flares. Uh, and we don't know, but that seemed a decent explanation under the circumstances. That's as close as I've come. Unfortunately, I cannot say by personal experience, those aliens were nice guys. <laughs> I saw that saucer move. No, no such luck. If other countries from around the world started to disclose information in regards to UFOs, do you think it'd put the pressure on the U.S. government to reveal some truth? No, I think it would put pressure on the governments to get those other countries off their back. Uh, I think the United States has, and remember, Russia feels the same way, I'm sure, and so do the Chinese. Uh, you know, it's not just the U.S. Uh, and, you know, I'm sure one of the reactions to Roswell was, who are these guys working with? They're little guys on board. Maybe they're working with the Chinese, they're little guys. <laughs> you know, you don't know, when you don't know, you've got to be careful. And there are more of them than there are of us, let's face it. <laughs> so you'd like to know who's talking to who about what, where, and when, and we don't. You know, Staten, we're getting a lot of information from you, and I really appreciate you being with us, and it's amazing. I want to ask you about President Obama being elected again for President of the United States. Do you think he's privy to some of the secret information in regards to UFOs, or who really is in charge of the government? That's a difficult question because there is a certain amount of safety for any classified activity if the president doesn't have the details because he has asked so many questions so many times. He talks to the press all the time and what he doesn't know can hurt you. In other words, the plausible deniability. Well, I didn't know about that. The one president I think did know something was the first George Bush because he had been director of the Central Intelligence Agency. And as as that, he certainly knew something. But I don't think he was telling his son or anybody else. You know, that's, I worked under security for 14 years. People say all these guys would have told their wives. Forget it. I never told my wife anything classified. I'd be crazy to do that. You know, so who knows? But you don't want the president to know too much. Uh, you might tell him, uh, you know, you don't have a need to know for that, Mr. President. I'm sorry, but it's a vital matter. Stanton, have you ever actually seen in person or on film, or better yet, actually held an artifact that came from a UFO crash? I've never seen an artifact from a crash. I've seen physical effects produced by saucers near the ground as one of the 4,000 physical trace cases that Ted Phillips has investigated. After you read the first 200, it's commonplace. They're seen near the ground, and when they leave, you find physical changes in the ground, but you don't find pieces of the craft. You are often referred as the godfather of UFOlogy, and rightfully so. 
you know, assuming disclosure continues to elude us, what direction would you like UFOlogy to go? And what about your legacy? I'd like to see uh, more serious attention being given at universities, more courses being taught. There have been some. There have been a dozen PhD theses. That's not enough. There's plenty of work to keep a lot of people busy. And I'd like to see people start thinking in terms of what's the, the universe outside of the Earth like? And the notion that, that there are people who are never in contact with other beings from other planets because you can't get here from there, which is so much hogwash. Uh, we need to think, what does it mean if we're able to become part of a galactic federation? And, you know, that's the thing about the Betty and Barney Hill case. The base stars, Zeta-1 and Zeta-2 reticuli, constellation of reticulum, got to go below the equator to see it. They're only 39.3 light years away. But from each other, they're only an eighth of a light year apart. They're next door neighbors. And they're also a billion years older than the sun. So can you imagine what their technology might be? and how much more incentive they would have for interstellar travel than it is for us, because we're out in the boonies, nobody next door. Uh, for them, incidentally, you can see people on planets around one looking over at the other. You can see it all day long, all night long, and the important thing, the other one. That changes your picture of what's going on. And so I think we need to start growing up to the notion of connectedness of us not being at the top of the heap. I mean, Copernicus was wrong, so was Ptolemy. Uh, what we realize, we're not the big shots we'd like to think we are. Too bad, maybe we can learn something from that. Very insightful, Stanton. I really wanna thank you for joining us right here at Third Phase of Moon. And if you could come back and answer some more questions in the future, that would be great. Sure. And I should mention my website, www.stantonfriedman.com. It lists all my books, lists my schedule, lists my activities. So people say, where can I find out this? And I do get these kinds of questions. I say, go to my website, www.stantonfriedman.com. Appreciate it, Stan. Thank you very much. Thanks. I want to thank everybody from around the world that joined us for this exclusive interview right here in Third Phase of Moon. And stay tuned for more updates. And if you've captured anything amazing in regards to UFOs, contact us via Skype or Facebook, Third Phase of Moon. My name's Blake Cousins, and we'll see you again next time.